listen up, y'all, cause this is it. The numbers we're making are so vicious. Mathematicious expedition. It's me, be kind of Mr. Wharton. I hope my answer And this is your 6.2 multiplying and dividing radical section. Brings me some satisfaction. And we're going to start going over some rules for multiplying radicals. I'm just kidding. What if I talk like that? That'd be crazy. 6.1 was all about simplifying how to break them down and make them smaller and kind of go through that process. 6.2 is going to talk about how to multiply and divide radicals uh, with different powers, square roots, cube roots, stuff like that, but also how to uh, actually kind of multiply the, the things together. So uh, some rules. we got to go over these first. Uh, these are really important. So I'm not going to necessarily put numbers next to them because it's not like a specific order that you're going to do things, but there's some things that you're just going to watch out for. So the first thing is you have to make sure that the, the indexes are the same. Make sure the indexes are the same here. If the indexes aren't the same, then you can't multiply them together. This is going to be a hint here uh, that all of these indexes are going to be the same. Uh, we just have to make sure that they are, but they they, shall, they all should be anyway. So the second thing that I want to discuss here is when you multiply radicals, we want to multiply insides with insides and outsides with outsides. We don't want to mix the two. We don't want to do an inside with an outside and an outside with an inside. We don't want to do that. We want to multiply insides with insides, outsides with outsides. Um, that's pretty much what it is. Another thing, I guess this would be the first thing if you ever want to talk about like specific rules. The very, very first thing, so I guess it should be this is a one and then this would be a two here, um, is really to uh, break down roots first. Uh, break down roots first. What I mean by that is if you have the square root of eight, you know that this can be broken down as what? Two, two, and two, which is really two square root of two. Break it down first and then it's going to be a lot easier to multiply later. Because otherwise you're going to be getting really large numbers on some of these and it's kind of not going to make sense or it might make sense, but it'll be really large and it'll be kind of hard to kind of fix them and finish them out. So, uh, so that's really the three that you got to know. Um, and we're going to do a whole bunch of practice with this anyway, so it's really not going to be anything out of the ordinary. It's because basically the more times you do them, the better off you're going to be. So let's uh, let's get to the couple examples there. So again, multiplying, I, I want to multiply inside with inside, outside with outside, but I want to break it down first. Well, five and two cannot be broken down. So inside with inside, so that's root 10, five times two is 10, outside with outside, so if negative four times one is negative four. That's it, that's all we're doing. This is not that terrible of a section. Uh, number two, this is, uh, again, I want inside with inside, but out, but I want to break it down first. Well, 10 is 2 times 5, right, times 5 root 5 over here. So there, there you go. That's what I have. What did we say square roots and cube roots and fifth roots and all that stuff is? It's basically saying that I need this, the root or the index, right? This is a 2 and a 2. This tells me how many I need of each specific term or individual you know, number or variable. So I only have one 5 here, but I'm actually combining it with this 5 over here. So because... I have two fives on the inside of my radical. I can pull one of the fives out, cross the other one out, and then now that five that you brought out gets combined with the other five that's already there. So that makes a 25. Root, what number that I did not touch? That two, so that is your answer there. That's the hardest part to understand. You could very easily have done inside with inside and you get five root 50. And then you got to break 50 down as 5 times 5 times 2. 5 pops, that crosses out, and the 2 stays in. You can do it that way too, but when we get to big numbers like down here with 32 and 64 and 20 and 15, even these are kind of large, and I don't want to do that. So if you do it the first way that I showed you right here, this will make more sense. Number 3, I have 4 root, break it down, 3, 3x three to the 3rd times a negative 4 root, what, 2, 2, x squared. I'm sorry, 2, 2, 3, x squared. Negative 4 root 2, 2, 3, x squared, right? So that's all underneath that. And then I want to do, again, insides and outsides and all that stuff. I want to do them together here. So this is a 3. So one of the 3s can pop. The other 3 gets crossed because that's a pair. 
I have a pair of twos there, so the two gets crossed. I have three X's here and two X's here. Well, how many do I have total? I have really five of them. But my index is a two. How many twos can go into five? We've talked about that in the last section. And then I pull that quantity out, and then I keep the quantity that's left on the inside. So let's finish this problem. So three I brought out, which is 12. So 12, okay? This two I brought out, which that's an eight, okay? Times a negative there. And then x to the five, well, what did I say? How many twos go into five? Well, that's two, okay? And how many is left on the inside? Well, I'm left with one x on the inside. And if I look, there's one three here that I didn't touch. So that three is left on the inside. And now I multiply the outside numbers together. Negative 96x squared root 3x. There you go. Inside, inside, outside with outside. It's not, it's more, it's not any more complicated than that. Uh, number four, let's go here. This is root 20, which is actually 2, 2, and 5. And then r to the third times a negative 4 root 3, 5, and an r. So, I have again, I have a 2 pops. The other 2 gets crossed. This 5 pops. Well, why? Because I have another one over here that gets crossed out. And then how many r's do I have total? I have 4. So, because it's a square root, I can pull 2 of them out. Right? 2 of them out. So I get a 2 and a 5 that popped. Then the negative 4 is still there, so it's multiplied by that. I have two R's that popped. And then what uh, stays in? Well, what's the only number I didn't actually touch? Well, that 3. And I don't have any R's that I didn't touch, so let's multiply those together. That gives me a negative 40 R squared root 3. Please don't get confused and say, oh, this is 10 minus 4. No, it's not. It's 10 times a negative 4. Okay, 10 times. Number 5. Well, now I'm dealing with higher roots, right? This is a three, this is a four, that's a three, and that's a four. Oh, man, he's going to get kind of kind of crazy. But if we, again, break it down first, it will help. What is 32 broken down? 32 broken down is two, 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 two. There are five twos in 32. And then what's four broken down? Four is broken down as two and two. Again, I have the third roots there at three. So this three tells me I need three of each number. So I have three twos right there. I have uh, two more there and one more here, right? So one of the twos gets popped. Those cross out. Another two gets popped out. That one crosses, and this one over here crosses. So how many pop out? The two of them became a four. And then I'm left with a third root of how many twos that I didn't touch. Oh, that one right there, and that's it right there. That's what I'm saying. Break the number down, because otherwise you're going to be dealing with 128 and you're going to have to do it from there. And that's just kind of stupid. You might as well just break it down first. Number six, this is negative fourth root of four, which is two times two, times the negative fourth root of four, which is two times two. I have how many twos? Two and two make four of them. So I can pull one of them out, cross, cross, cross. So the two gets popped out. I have a negative times a negative. Well, that's just a positive. And then nothing left inside. So that is my answer, my lone two. It is a lone wolf. Number seven here. Uh, in the last section, I talked about if I have an odd root with a negative, that this negative just pops out. Okay, so it goes away in there, but it pops out. So it's really a negative three times the third root. 48 broken down is two, 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 three, a to the three times the four, the third root there, and then eight is two, 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 a to the four. You got a lot of twos. Okay, well, how many do I need? I need three of them. So I have three of them here. So one pops, cross, cross. Do I have three more twos at all? Oh, yeah, I do. I got three right here. So there's three. One pops, cross, cross. So now let's multiply the numbers that come out. So two came out with that. So it's a negative six. What's left there? That is six. A to the third times the two popped out here. So that's an eight. And then I have a third root of a to the 4. Now, all my numbers are good, but my variables aren't. Sorry, I need a 3 there. So all my, all my variables are not. So how many variables do I actually have total? I have 7. So how many groups of 3 can I make? Well, I can make 2, so I have to pull 2 of them out. So it's negative 6a squared. i got to pull 2 of them out. What is left? Well, I still got that 6a. 6 minus, or 7 minus 6 is 1. And then I still got the 8 there as well. So this is being multiplied by 8. So my answer is negative 48a squared 
third root of six. Eight. Sorry, keep forgetting the three. Don't forget the three, please. That'll be wrong, marked wrong. Okay. Uh, number eight here. Thirty-two. We already said 32 from over here was 5, 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then the P, times the fourth root of 64. Well, if 32 was 5 of them, that means 64 is going to be 6 of them because it's only it's multiplied by another 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, P squared. How many total 2s do I have? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Dang, that's a lot of 2s. So I'm going to pull a 2 out, cross 2 more, or 3 more out, I'm sorry, and a group of 4. I'm going to take another 2 out and then cross 3 more out. And then I don't have 4 left, I only have 3, so I am done pulling numbers out. How many P's do I have? I only have 3. I can't pull any P's out, so here's my answer. Two twos came out, made a 4. I have the 4th root left. I have three twos, which makes an eight, eight, two times two times two, and then three p's, which makes p to the third power. That is your answer for number eight. Okay, what I want you guys to do is try these four, starting at number nine through 12. Two of them are just square roots, and then 11 and 12 are a fifth root and a fourth root. All right, I want you to try them real quick, hit pause, and then hit play. Okay, if I look at number 9, I want to break them down first. So 20 we know is 2, a 2, and a 5, and then an R. And then 18 is a 2, a 3, and a 3, and then an R. So again, I have I need groups of 2. So I have 2, 2, so I pull a 2 out, cross it out. I have 2, 3, so I pull a 3 out, cross the other one out. So I pulled out a 2, and I pulled out a 3. So that makes a 6 times the negative 6 that's already there. So it's a negative 36. Uh, can I pull out any R's? Yeah, I can pull out one of them because it's R squared. And then what do I have left? What did I not touch? I didn't touch a 5 and a 2, which makes a 10. That should be your answer. There should be no R's left inside. Number uh, 10 here. I have 60, which is 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 V squared times a negative 2. And then 12 is 2, 2, 3 V to the third. V to the third. Uh, twos, I have one, cross it out. I bring can bring out one, cross the next two out. Uh, do I? Oh, I have two threes. Oh, man, oh, man. So bring a three out, cross the other three out. So what's left outside? Two times three, it's a six, times a two, which is uh, 12, times a negative two, which is a negative 24. Can I bring any Vs out? Oh, yeah, heck yeah, I can. I have five inside. I need two. How many groups of two can I pull? I can pull two of them out times the square root of what did I did not touch? I didn't touch a five. And then I should have just the V left inside. That was pretty pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory there. Number 11, I have five on the outside times the fifth root. 27 is three, 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 and K to the third times, times the fifth root of 567. So that is, so 567, you're going to have to probably do your factor trees and do that way, um, but you should get 33337. Three, three, I think that I am right. Uh, I believe I am. So then what happens? Oh, then I have a K to the third there. I'm sorry. So I need five threes. I have three of them here and two more there. So one of the threes, um, gets pulled out right and then the other four threes gets crossed out so i pulled out a three which makes a 15 i don't have a number here other than just a one right so it's still just 15 can i pull any k's out well yeah i got six i need five so i can pull one of them out and then i have the fifth root of what is left two i have two threes that makes a nine and then i should have one k left that is your final answer there Number 12, oh man, we're getting some bigger numbers. This is going to be a lovely. Uh, number 12, 162, so the fourth root of 162 is, oh man, 2 times uh, 81, so that's 3, 3, 3, 3, and then times a negative 5, and then the fourth root of 729. So that's 3 times 3 times three times three times three times three man that's a lot of threes uh those should be a v and a v to the third power so 
How many twos can I pull? None, because there's only one of them. How many threes? I need groups of four. So there's the group of four. One pulls, the other three gets crossed out. There's a group of three here, or a group of four, I'm sorry, that pulls, cross, cross, cross. Uh, any Vs pull? Yeah, I got four Vs, so that means one of them gets pulled out, and the other three get thrown away. So I pulled a, a three out here and a three out there, so that gives me a 12 here. That gives me a 15 here, and I pulled a V out, so that's fine there. And then times the fourth root of what? Fourth root of what? A two, and then two threes, which makes an 18. 18, don't have any variables left. This is just being multiplied by that. Sorry, I know that kind of looks weird. But then I get negative 180 V to the four, or V times the fourth root of uh, 18. So that is your final answer right there. Hopefully you guys did okay in the multiplying section. Uh, multiplying section is a little easier than the division section because the division section is going to be crazy. It's going to get a little cray-cray up in here. And by here, I mean the classroom. All right, with the division of radicals, this is going to be the most complex part of this specific section because then in five in, or in 6.3, you're going to kind of do some other uh, radical division, and that's going to get a little more complicated. So we need to make sure we know how to do the division of radicals here, the easy stuff. And then when we get to the complicated stuff, hopefully it'll be a little bit more uh, easier or a little bit easier or a little less confusing. Okay, so we don't necessarily, again, have rules here like we did up in the top, just same, same kind of thing. We're just some uh, important concepts that we need. Uh, there are some things that I want to talk about what we, what we want to do first. So the first thing that I want to try to do is to try to simplify first. And I'll explain what that is. Again, I'll go through the problem on how to do it. The second thing is... Um, I don't like, so let's put it, let me, let me try to rephrase this here a little bit. Um, there shouldn't be roots in your denominator, like in your final answer. If your final answer contains a root in your denominator, then you're wrong. Okay. Then you are wrong. That is without a doubt. I'm not going to look at the rest of it. So there shouldn't be any roots in your denominator. Well, why shouldn't there? Um, it's just not proper. It's not mathematically proper. It just doesn't look good. Uh, it, yeah, that again puts you in like math jail. Okay, think about that from last unit as well or last section as well. I talked about that. The third one here, I want to how do well how do I make sure that there is no square roots or cube roots or whatever in your denominator? Uh, you are going to multiply the top and bottom, so the numerator and denominator, by what you need. And you're like, what do I need? What do I need? I need an A. That doesn't mean I'm going to give you an A, but what I need is nice numbers that will get rid of my root. Okay, so what, hopefully the examples will help. If they don't help, then again, you need to ask questions in class, but with the examples, they should help. Okay, uh, so let's go through uh, 13, 14, and 15 here. Okay, with 13. So if I want to simplify first, what does that mean? That was, you remember, that was the first thing in our rules. We talked about simplify first. If I look at these roots here, root 5 and root 3, they're both monomials, right? Numerator and denominator, both monomials. So I can, what I can do is I can simplify inside the roots if I could. If 5 and 3 were divisible by something, then I can make those smaller. But in this case, they're not divisible by the same thing, so I can't make them any smaller. So what I can do now is, then I can use now the third step or the third rule or whatever I wrote down at the top that said I need to multiply the top and bottom by what I need. Okay, and here's where I'm talking about what I need. Well, if we think about this, this is really an index of two. So this means I need two of something. Okay, well, that something is the three. That's what I want to do. So I want to multiply the denominator and the numerator by the square root of how many more threes do I need in order to cancel out? I just need one of them, okay? This is what we call rationalizing. We're gonna talk more about this next section, but I'm gonna mention it now. Rationalizing is basically what we're doing is we're going to rationalize the denominator and so that we end up with no square roots on, or in the denominator there. 
Okay, it's called rationalizing. So square root of three times the square root of three, remember a three pops and the other three gets crossed off. So the now my denominator is now a solid three. There is no more roots down there, so that's good. That is good. On the top, let's multiply four square root of five times square root of three. Well, how do I multiply square roots? I multiply inside with inside, outside with outside. So outside four times outside one is four. Inside root five times inside root three is inside root 15. Because I didn't reduce anything here, uh, most of the time it's not going to reduce here. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. You just kind of kind of have to check. But there you go, right there. 15 is not reducible, so that's it. Number 14. Now, again, you have uh, the same roots, 3 and 3, the same indexes, right? And you need the same. That's a given. That's like we did on multiplication. You need the same down here as well. Uh, I want to get rid of the root 2. The 5 is in not in a root, so I don't care about this right now. So how do I have to multiply the top and bottom by to get rid of the 2? Well, this tells me how many I need, and I only have one of them. So I'm going to multiply by the third root of how many more 2s do I need to get rid of them. Well, I need two more 2s. So I'm going to multiply the top as well by 2 times 2. Now, one of the 2s can pop out. The other two 2s, haha, two twos, can get crossed out. Again, we've, like we've done before. You have three of something with a cube root. One comes out. The other two gets crossed out. Now, let's multiply the top. 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12. So the third root of 12 over, well, I pulled out a 2 with the 5, so that makes a 10. I don't have anything that's able to reduce. Just like you said inside with inside when you multiply or outside with outside, same thing when you divide. Okay, This is outside of of a square root, and this is inside of a root. I cannot mix them together. Okay, I cannot mix insides with outsides and vice versa. Number 15. The first step up there is to simplify if I could first. Well, what does that mean? That means that if I can pull stuff out and make it smaller, then let's do that. Remember, this is u to the third. That's a 2, so I can pull a 1u out. And then I have the square root of 5uv. Okay, and then 3 on top, sorry. And then now let's multiply here. I need the square root, square root, there we go, of what? I have 1, 5, so I need one more. I have 1, U, I need one more. And I have 1, V, need one more. So the square root of 5, U, V for the top and the bottom. Now let's multiply insides with insides, outside with outside. So 3 outside times 1 outside is 3 on the outside times the square root of 5uv. Remember, I don't need to write that 2 for the square root. It's understood. But if you want to write it, be my guest. That's just more writing for you. But hey, you're all right. Now let's multiply the bottoms. Because I have 2 of everything here, a 5 gets pulled, a u gets pulled, and a v gets pulled. So I'm left with a 5. I pulled out a u, but I had a u already there, so it's u squared. And then I got a v that comes out as well. That's it for number 15. For number 16 here, uh, again, I want to break down your inside there and the root in your denominator. So it's technically you have the 4 that's there. You have the third root and then break it down. So 16 is 2, 2, 2, and 2. And then an M and an N all under, right, that's all on the bottom, other than negative 3M squared N. Now, this negative, technically, it does go to the top, so that's why I just put it to the top. You don't have to do that. It's just something that just makes sense. I just want to make sure it's still there, okay? Don't forget about it. So let's reduce first. I can pull the 2 out. I can cross 2 of the other ones away. So this technically is an 8, okay? times the third root of what? Of one more two and then an M and an N. Sorry, an N. There we go. Now let's multiply top and bottom by what I need. So I have the third root of how many more do I need? I have one, two. I need two more of them to make three. I have one M. I need two more of them. And I have one N and I need two more of them. So that's what's going to happen by the top and the bottom. So two times two, M squared, N squared. So I just kind of cleaned it up a little bit. 
So I'm going to take out a 2, I'm going to take out an M, I'm going to take out an N. Then everything else gets crossed out. Oh, yeah, it does. What is done in your denominator? What is there? Well, the 8 times the 2 they brought out was a 16. I brought out 1M and 1N. On top, I need to multiply insides with insides, outside with outsides. So this is all outside, and that's a 1 there. So it's a negative 3M squared N. And then this is all on the inside, so that just stays there, times the third root of, of 4, 2 times 2 is 4, m squared, n squared. And that is your final answer right there. Okay, well, apparently this is not right. I apparently circled it by accident, um, but it's not, so we're looking at it again. If I look here, uh, I have m squareds and n's, and I have m's and n's on the bottom. So just like we talked about um, in unit uh, 5, where I have a fraction with some variables, I actually have to simplify these. Okay, so this is technically um, just two M's on top, one on the bottom, so that one's gone, and this becomes uh, just a 1, right, just a number 1. And then I have an N on top and an N on the bottom, so now those are now canceled as well. So that makes your final answer negative 3M, and then the third root of 4m squared n squared over 16 and that is it that is your final answer okay that is the right one hopefully this time uh it's the right one but i'm going to clear some of this uh so that we can get to number 17 and then number 18 there as well 17 looks a little different because i have a binomial in the numerator but that's not that big of a deal okay and then 18 as well uh, with 17, again, I want to break down your denominator, uh, but 17, I cannot be broken down, so that's your prime number, right? So I want to multiply top and bottom by something, and I need a square root, so I have a square root there. I need two of them, two of what? Two of 17s. So I need to multiply top and bottom by root 17 over root 17. The reason why I multiply the top and bottom by the same thing is because, remember, uh, technically this makes a 1. And if I multiply anything by 1, I don't change the value of the fraction or anything before it. So it looks different, but I don't change the value. So now on the top, or let's do on the bottom first. I have two 17s, so 1 comes out. The other one gets crossed out. So my denominator is 5 times 17, which is 85. Now my numerator, I have what? I have a binomial and a monomial. So I'm going to distribute this square root of 17 with the 1 and the 3. So I'm going to multiply this times this, and this times this. But again, what did I say? Insides with insides, outside with outsides. So this is a negative 1 root 17, and then this is going to be plus root 51. 3 times 17 is 51. I cannot reduce any of them, so I am done. That wasn't that bad. Number 18, again, I want to simplify first if I can. 14. What is 14? Well, 14 is a 2, a 7, an N, and an N. Right? That just breaks it down that way. It's very simply there. Then, I want to multiply top and bottom by something to get rid of it. Well, I have 1, 2, and I need 4, 2. So, i got to multiply by 3 more 2s. Then, up, up for the 7, I have 1, 7. I need 4 of them. i got to multiply by 3 more 7s. And then I have two n's. I need four, so I got to multiply by two more n's. So that was it, was, it looks pretty complicated, but once you break it down this way, it makes more sense um, to do it this way here. So I need a two, a two, a two, a seven, a seven, a seven, and an n and an n. So now let's figure out what I get on the denominator part. Two gets pulled, seven gets pulled, n gets pulled. Then everything else just basically cancels, right? So everything else goes away. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. That makes a 14n. That is your denominator, 14n. 2 times 7 times n. Up top, this gets distributed to the 4 and distributed to that there. Okay, so negative 4 is going to stay there times the fourth root of what? Of That's uh, 6. Oh, I'm sorry, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Holy cow, this is a big number. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 times 7. I'm going to pull up my calculator here in a little bit. Well, maybe I won't, but just use your calculator to calculate. But 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 7 times 7 times 7 is, oh, man, uh, 7 times 7 times 7 is 343. 
Okay, and uh, 343 times 8, so i got to multiply that. So 8 times 343 is 2744. I had to use my calculator for that one. I didn't pull it up, but it's okay. You just use your calculator. I use my Wabbit one on my phone. Now, that's all crazy. So that's going to be the number inside, right? 2744. And then I have an N squared as well there. Plus, plus what? Well, this is, again, getting distributed with the fourth root of 2N to the third power. But now if you look, I have a 2 on the inside plus 3 more. If I have fourth root... That means one of the twos gets pulled out, right? And then the other ones get crossed out. And then I have five total ends. So that means one of the ends also gets pulled out. Okay, times. How many sevens do I have? Three times, that's 343 from before. And I should have one N left inside. So I know the 14 N is not there, but if you want to you know, put it in the middle, that's fine too if you want to you know, do that. But that is your answer for that one. Okay, apparently I made another little uh, error here. Uh, this is not your final answer in 18 as well. Um, I'm just like circling wrong answers, I guess. Uh, the reason why this is not right is because if I look at the numerator when the binomial, um, technically I have this right plus all that stuff over 14n, but this is a 4 and that's a 2 and that's a 14. So all of those numbers can be divided by 2. So this technically becomes a 2 there. That goes away, and this one becomes a 7. So let's rewrite that here over here. Uh, I just kind of shifted to the right a little bit. So I get negative 2. I get uh, the fourth root of 2, 7, 4, 4, n squared, plus, now I took away that 2 there, so that's just an n, and then I get the fourth root of 3, 4, 3, n. 3, 4, 3, n, okay? It's my numerator, and then my denominator I took away the 14, made it a 7, so that's that's a 7n. Now, this has an n here, and this has an n, but since that 2 in front of the parentheses, or in front of the root there, I'm sorry, doesn't have an n, I can't get rid of that. Okay, so this is your final answer. Uh, I hope to never not have this happen again in this video, but uh, I guess, you know, we'll see. Uh, but that's it, and then moving on to the next section there. Okay, number 19 through 22 are very similar to what you just did, so I want you to practice, practice, practice right now. Go ahead and try, hit pause, and then hit play. Okay, hopefully you paused for a long enough amount of time, uh, and I want you to at least try these, okay? If you finished them, great. If you didn't, again, we need to make sure we're going wrong here. So here we go. This one here, uh, 3 and x squared. Technically, because it's an x squared and that's a square root, I can pull an x out. So this is really written as 2x to the third over x square root of 3. Then I need to multiply the top and bottom by just a root 3 and a root 3. Because I need one more of the 3s, right? So one of these pops, the other gets crossed off. So my numerator is 2x to the third root 3 over, and then 3 pulls out with the x, so 3x there. Then I can simplify, okay? This gets crossed off. This 3 becomes a 2, right? X squareds um, are left on top because I can basically take 1x away. So answer, I get 2x squared root 3, sorry, over 3x. 2x squared root 3 over 3x. Number 20, let's break it down first. All right, number 20. There's a couple different ways we can do number 20. I'm going to do it kind of, uh, I'll do it both ways. Actually, I'll kind of show you here the, the differences between them. So the first way is because these are the same indexes, 3 and 3, I can simplify the numbers inside first. So this really simplifies to 3 times the third root of 1 over 3 times, or I'm sorry, the third root of, then I divide, right? 4 divided by 4 is 1, so 12 divided by 4 is 3. And then the k and the k to the third or fourth became k to the third, right? I simplified that goes away all of that. This became a three, and this became a three as well when I side divided. So let's finish it up now. Third root of one. Well, any root of one is always one, so one times three is just three. This is now the third root of three k to the third. Well, this is k to the third, so one of those k's pop, right? So I get k times the third root of three 
which needs to be multiplied by the third root of two more threes, top and the bottom. Because I have one, but I need three. So then here's my answer. Three times the third root of nine over, and then one of the threes pulls out, right? And then the other ones get crossed off, which over 3K, which then the threes can cancel. And I'm left with the third root of nine over the variable K. Man, that was a lot of work, okay? I bet you the next way that I'm going to show you is probably going to be more work than that one, okay? So that was the first way. Here's the second way you can do this, and I'm going to kind of erase what's already there. Okay, here's the second way here. I want to, again, break this 12 down, so that's a 2, a 2, a 2, and a 3. And then k to the 4th, remember, one of the k's gets pulled out, so I am left with uh, 3 on top, third root of 4k over... Uh, 1k gets pulled, right? So k outside, third root of 2, 2, 3, and a k, because I pulled 1k out, but 1 is still left inside. Times, now let's multiply to get rid of my 2s and my 3s and my k's on the inside. So, how many do how many 2s do I need? Well, I need one more 2. How many 3s do I need? I need two more. How many k's do I need? I need two more k's as well. That means the same goes for the top. So 2, 3, 3, K, K equals the 2 gets pulled, a 3 gets pulled, and a K gets pulled in the bottom. Everything else disappears. So a 2 and a 3 became a 6. A K times the K that was already there becomes a K squared. Up top, well, this 4 is actually 2 times 2. So that means that now I have two 2s here plus another two there, so I can pull a two out, cross the other two twos out. So that two gets pulled with the three that's already there, makes a six. Then what's left? All right, I can pull uh, a K out because I have one K here and two Ks here. So one K gets pulled, the other two Ks get crossed off. And then what is left on the inside? Well, that's a nine. Uh, let's simplify, six over six, gone. K over K squared, that K gets gone, this becomes just a one. So what do I have left? Third root of 9 over k. Eh, maybe that is shorter. I don't know. I guess to each their own. You can do whichever way you want to do. Number 21. 10 is already broken down. All right, 10 is already broken down, so I don't need to uh, break it down any further. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of 10, square root of 10, or 2 times 5, 2 times 5. It doesn't matter. That's fine. So I distribute the tops. And I get square root of 30 plus 5 square root of 20 over, uh, remember, a 10 and a 10. So a 10 gets pulled and this other 10 crosses. So that's a 40. Some of you might be like, all right, I'm good. I'm done. Right? I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. Well, I'm not. This 20 is actually 2 times 2 times 5. So a 2 gets pulled and another 2 gets crossed off. So this technically becomes root 30 plus 10 root 5 over 40. Now, some of you are like, well, I can divide those. Well, yeah, I can if there was a number in front of that 30 that had divisible by 2 or 5 or 10 or 4 or something like that. Okay, so I can't do that because that's just a 1. So that is my final answer. Like Sean Conrad. Sean Connery. I'll take that category, Alex. That's a terrible Sean Connery impression. I'm sorry, I just ruined like four seconds of your life with that one. Number 22. I need to break down my denominator, which is just what? A 2, a 2, an X, and an X. So when I multiply, I need to multiply by uh, two more 2s and two more Xs. So same with the top, 2, 2, X, X. Uh, 2 gets popped, cross the other 2s out. An X pops, cross the other X's out. So a 2 popped, that made a 6 in your denominator. An X popped, that made an X down there also. Distribute, distribute, distribute. Okay, uh, I can't do anything there, so that's 5 times 4. 2 times 2 is 4, times the 5 is 20. Okay, so that is inside your root there, the fourth root. And then the 5 is out there. And then x to the 3rd and an x squared. Okay, well, that means I have 5 x's. That means one of them can get pulled out and one's left inside. So pull an x out, leave an x inside. Minus 
How many X's do I have here? Two, and I have two more there. That means one can get pulled, and then I have no more left inside times the fourth root of what? Fourth root of four. So, final answer, 5X times the fourth root of 20X minus X times the fourth root of four all over 6X. I'm not done. I remember I said that was the final answer. Well, I lied. Okay, I'm not done. Technically, all of these have an X on the outside of my roots. This has an X here, has an X here, has an X here. So that means I can cross them out. I can cross them out. So here's my final answer. I won't lie this time. I'm right. This is my final answer. 5 fourth root of 20X minus the fourth root of 4 over 6. And that is your final answer there. All righty. That concludes your 6.2 multiplying and dividing radicals. All right. If you have any questions, please ask in class. But um, since you follow this video, make sure you understand all the, the try it problems, um, the ones that say you try it. Make sure we're doing those and uh, as best as we can. Again, ask questions if we need help. But that concludes this video. So catch you on the flip side. Remember, take notes, do work, and you will. Be successful.